Retired attorney and mining expert Rupert Smith has put together his 30 years' worth of the South African mining experience and produced a book titled Still a Few Cents. Well, in this book, he puts a spotlight on the country's setting of, a, of the failed mining and corruption by taking us on a journey of Stephen Wakefield, a lawyer and director who tries to uncover the truth about what exactly happened to one of his employees, Paul Memela, whose body was found where he wasn't supposed to be in the first place. And without giving away too much, Rupert joins me now in studio to help us unpack this video. Very good morning to you, Rupert, and welcome. Good morning. Thank you very much. Nice to be in the studio. Jeez, this is such a, a scintillating read. Talk us through it. Uh, give us a brief synopsis of what it's all about. Right. It's a, it's a whodunit. So it's a crime story, and it is like a little bit like Agatha Christie, where you start out with a series of clues, mm. and towards the end of the, the, the book, you understand what has all happened. But it's not just that, it's supposed to be a South African story that deals with South African issues, primarily the juxtaposition between the wealthy and the poor. The title of the book, Steal a Few Cents, is, has a, the, the payoff line that says, steal a few cents and they put you in jail, steal a few millions and they put you in charge. And that <laughs> is one of the things that unfortunate, unfortunately seems to happen here. If you steal the, the petty cash box, you're in jail the next day. If you steal lots of money, then you become the CEO. And yeah. the, you know, so that's the purpose of the book is to, to juxtapose those two positions. And it deals, as I say, primarily with a murder mystery, but in the second instance with the social issues that surround us, mostly the, the issue of the black tax. Which, which young kids who go to, go to enormous lengths to qualify and to get professional qualifications then have a whole clan to support at the end of that and they often get themselves into trouble mm -hmm. because there's a greater demand on them than their the income can produce and that's what happens to the hero in the book. He's a young, honest man who just really doesn't know what else to do so he attempts to steal a little bit of money and he gets caught. Mm. And as opposed to him, there's another character in the book who steals a lot of money, but he's the boss. He's the boss and yes. he's in charge. Yes. Yeah, and uh, yes. particularly on the issue of uh, Mpo Memela, whose body was found in a conveyor belt where he's not supposed to be. So yes. the mystery makes it even more deeper. Yes, he's, he's the immediate victim. It is one of the issues in the book is how dangerous mining is. And mining is a very, very dangerous thing. And one of the most dangerous installations in any mine is the conveyor belt. Strangely, it looks as if it's a, 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 a very safe place. But if a conveyor belt hooks you, then you're in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. So that's where it starts off. And that's the beginning of the story to get into the, the social issues and to explore how our country works, how the mining industry works and how criminal justice work so that's what it is so in this book you also explore issues of uh, corruption and uh, mine safety and fraud in the mining industry how then do you manage to capture uh, these themes as raw as you did well uh, I hope I did manage to capture them but but the thing about it is if you're in the mining industry these are issues that confront you on a daily basis mm -hmm. so safety is a, a fundamental issue in the the, the mining industry um, and there is a constant, em constant emphasis on safety, and it's a very dangerous, a very dangerous pastime, a very dangerous thing to do. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, our mining industry does have this element of fraud and corruption attached to it, because that unfortunately seems to be what is happening to our industry. Not, mm -hmm. not overwhelmingly so, but it's, it's present all the time. Yeah. So what I've really put in the book as a description of my association with the mining industry. I mean, this is stuff I did for decades. And most of the, the stories in the book are just a retelling of incidents that in fact happened over the 30 year practice that I had yeah. in association with the mining industry. And I'm sure there's some similarities between you and the main character. <laughs> there may be. <laughs> <laughs> what are those similarities? Well, he's a lawyer and so am I, and he's yeah. in his 60s and so am I. And he has lots of cats and dogs, and so do I. Mm. <laughs> now, this book is classified as a, a fictional murder mystery, yes. all right? And it's a thriller, but when you're reading it, you get a sense that it's actually uh, based on a true story. Uh, what's the deal here? It's not a true story. It is a, it is a made-up story that is cobbled together from various incidents that happened to me over a lifetime in legal practice and in association with the mining industry. And 
Uh, it starts off with, as you have said, Paul Mamela, who was caught in a conveyor belt. And that is something that really did happen to us when I was in the mining industry. Okay. As some poor guy did, in fact, get caught in the conveyor belt, and we never found out why. Wow. So this is an attempt for me to tell myself a story as to how it happened. It clearly didn't happen that way, but okay. that's just the, the hook that I have used to get into the murder mystery. All right. Now, we literally have 10 seconds. So you're launching the book on the 9th of May at the Museum of Military History in Joburg. Correct, yes. At Give 6 us more details. At 6.30 at the Museum of Military History, which is at, at the zoo. Okay. And everybody welcome, please, and come along and... Uh, there will be an interview, we'll give you a glass of wine, we'll give you a block of cheese and a snack, and please come have a look. Okay, all right, Baba, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so very much. Well, you can also send us some of the books that you are reading or have read. All you have to do is to email Instagram or tweet us a picture in the relevant caption of the Peak of the Week Master Read for 2018. Your current read and the one you were hoping uh, was going to be great but turned out to be rather disappointing. Tweet us at MorningLiveSAPC using the hashtag MorningLiveSAPC. Well, I've just been speaking to Rupert Smith, the author of Still a Few Cents, uh, speaking to us live in our Johannesburg studios. And as you heard, he'll be launching this book on the 9th of May at the National Museum of Military History in Johannesburg at 6.30 p.m. And we're also calling out to aspiring writers and publishers who would like to be part of a studio discussion where we'll be talking about everything that has to do with literature. Now, if you are in Johannesburg or would be able to get yourself here, send us a brief email at morninglive at sapc.co.za and tell us why you deserve to be part of the audience.